Are you tired of feeling weighed down by debt and constantly running on a financial treadmill? You've come to the perfect place. Welcome to Finance IQ 101, the place to learn financial freedom. Today, we're going to explore the amazing realm of debt freedom. So if you're struggling with credit cards, loans, or feeling like your financial dreams are slipping away, don't worry. We've got some awesome strategies, tips, and hacks that can help you pay off that debt faster than you ever imagined. If you're ready to say goodbye to those sleepless nights and start building the future you deserve by getting rid of your debt, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. Here are proven strategies that will help you pay off your debt more quickly, based on the teachings of Dave Ramsey. Step number one, make a list of your debts. The first and most important step in improving your money management is to list your debts. Here's how to accomplish it in a straightforward manner. Imagine that you owe someone money for credit card bills, loans, for a vehicle or college, for example, or any other obligations. Making a list of all of these bills is the first step in regaining control of your money. List the names of your creditors, or the persons or businesses you owe money to, together with the sums owed to each of them. Here's the clever part. List these obligations in ascending order of size, beginning with the least amount you owe and working your way up. This puts the lowest debt at the top and the largest at the bottom of your list. This phase is crucial because it offers you a clear picture of your debts, like a to-do list, and it helps you understand what you're up against. You'll get a feeling of success right away by focusing on the lowest debt initially. It resembles crossing off a simpler item off your to-do list. This tiny victory may inspire you to keep working and eventually pay off all of your bills. In order to take charge of your money and progressively pay off your debt, the first step is to make a list of all of your bills and rank them from least to greatest. The second stage in taking charge of your finances is minimum payments and it's critical to understand why there is a minimum amount of money that you are required to repay each month when you borrow money whether it be via the use of a credit card or a loan the minimum payment is what it is termed you can only pay that little without getting into trouble it is now crucial to continue paying these minimal payments on schedule why here is a quick explanation number one avoid late fees and penalties the individuals or businesses you owe money to may charge you more if you don't pay at least the minimum amount by the due date. These additional expenses, often known as late fees and penalties, may mount up rapidly and increase the size of your debt. Keeping a good credit score is important since it serves as a report card on your financial behavior. It matters because it will have an impact on your future capacity to borrow money. Your credit score may decrease if you skip payments or just make the required minimum payments. As a result, borrowing money when you need it becomes more difficult and costly. Number two, maintain financial stability. You're maintaining your financial stability by meeting your obligations by paying at least the minimal payments. This enables you to manage your expenses and keeps your debt from spiraling out of control. Making minimal payments on time is, thus, analogous to completing your homework to stay out of trouble, keep up a decent grade, and manage your money well. It's a wise method to handle your money and maintain stability in your financial life. The third step is building a starter emergency fund. Building a starter emergency fund is an important step to protect your financial security. Let's break it down in a way that makes it easy to understand. Imagine you're on a trip to get control of your money, and the first thing you need is a little safety net. A starter emergency fund is the name for this safety net. Dave Ramsey says you should put away $1,000 for this fund. This is so important because of number one, unexpected surprises. Things like a quick car fix, a medical bill, or a broken item can come out of the blue. These shocks can cost money, and if you don't have savings, you might have to borrow money or use your credit cards to pay for them. Number two, keeping from getting more debt. Having that $1,000 saved up gives you a cushion. So if something unexpected comes up, you can use your emergency fund instead of taking out more loans. This keeps you from going further into debt, which can be very upsetting. 
Getting ready for the future. Your first emergency fund is like a small shield for your money. It gives you peace of mind because it helps you deal with things you didn't expect. It's the first step to getting a better handle on your money. So think of your $1,000 emergency fund as your superhero cape when it comes to money. It's there to help you out if you have to pay for something unplanned, and it keeps you from having to use credit cards or loans. Once you have this fund, you'll be better able to pay off your bills and work toward being financially independent. Step number four, pay attention to the smallest debt. Yes, once you have your $1,000 emergency fund, it's time to use the focus on the smallest debt way to pay off your bills. Think of your bills as a line of hurdles, with the smallest one being the easiest to get over. You're going to give that small loan your full attention by paying it off with any extra money you can find, like a raise at work or money you saved by cutting back on non-essentials. Keep making the minimum payments on your other bills so they don't get worse, but really focus on getting rid of that small one. Once it's paid off, you take the money you were using to pay it, the minimum payment plus any extra money, and put it toward the next smallest bill. It's like a mountain going downhill. With each debt you pay off, it gets bigger and stronger. This method lets you feel good about your progress quickly and gives you the confidence to take on bigger bills in the future. Step number five, get rid of your smallest debt first. Of course, the next step on your way to being debt free is paying off the smallest debt, which is pretty exciting. Here's an easy way to explain it. Imagine that your bills are all lined up in a row, like books on a shelf. You decide to finish the smallest one, which is like the tiniest book. So you use your extra money, the money you were throwing at your smallest bill, to pay it off totally. It's the same as putting that book away for good. Now, here's the smart part. Instead of partying and taking a break, you take the money you were using to pay off the smallest debt, the minimum payment plus any extra money you were putting toward it, and add it to the next smallest debt on your list. So your debt payback snowball grows like a snowball that rolls downhill and picks up more snow. This means you'll put more money toward your next bill and pay it off faster. With this method, you see effects quickly, which keeps you going. You're not just chipping away at your bills, you're knocking them down one by one, and each win makes your debt pile bigger. It's a smart way to slowly get out of debt. Step number six, repeat the process. Repeat the process is an important step on your way to financial independence. Here's a simple way to understand it. Imagine that paying off your bills is like playing a game of dominoes. You have already started taking out the tiniest dominoes one at a time. You will keep going from here. After you pay off the smallest debt, you don't stop. You take the money you were using to pay it and put it toward the next bill on your list. It's like using a bigger domino to knock over the next one. Now things start to get interesting. Every time you pay off a loan, you have more money to put toward the next one. It seems like the dominoes are falling more quickly and quickly. This process keeps going until you've paid off all your bills, even the big ones. It's like a snowball going downhill. As it goes, it picks up more snow and gets bigger. So you don't just pay off your bills, you also speed up as you go. This is how you get out of debt faster. It's like a weapon of money. Step number seven, celebrating milestones. Celebrating milestones is an enjoyable and significant step on your path to financial independence. Here is a brief justification. Think about ascending a mountain with the intention of reaching the summit. Each loan you pay off is like arriving at base camp while climbing a mountain. It's a significant achievement. Dave Ramsey encourages you to enjoy these occasions. Why? Because it motivates you more and makes you feel great about what you've accomplished. It's not necessary to organize a lavish party or spend a lot of money to celebrate. It may be as simple as treating yourself to a dinner you like or going for a stroll in the park. It's important to recognize your efforts and achievements. It's like stopping to gather your breath and take in the scenery from base camp before continuing your ascent. You're more likely to remain motivated and keep moving forward if you commemorate these accomplishments. It's like refueling your trip to ensure that you remain on course and summit that financial peak. So feel free to rejoice in your accomplishments. You deserve it. Step number eight, 
Maintain gazelle intensity. Staying gazelle intense means being totally committed and focused on achieving your financial objectives. Let's deconstruct it. Think of yourself as a fast gazelle being pursued by a cheetah. You must be really concentrated. You need to have the same level of laser-like concentration when it comes to paying off debt, however. Gazelle intensity is what Dave Ramsey refers to. This is how it goes. To start, you examine your expenditures and identify items you don't really need, such as additional streaming services or frequent dining out. After that, you reduce them to make even greater savings. It is comparable to the gazelle sprinting even faster to avoid the cheetah. But there's more. Additionally, you hunt for additional income streams by selling your unwanted possessions or taking on a part-time work. Your obligations are paid off with the additional funds. It is comparable to a gazelle discovering a shortcut to advance. Maintaining gazelle intensity entails taking your debt repayment very seriously. You're reducing your wasteful spending and looking for additional cash everywhere you can. You're resolved to escape your obligations as soon as you can, just as the gazelle did when it escaped the cheetah. It's a clever and determined technique to go closer to your monetary objectives. Step number nine, finish the debt snowball. Finishing the debt snowball is similar to completing a challenging problem or crossing the finish line in a marathon. Here's how to comprehend it quickly. You recall how we began by paying off your lowest loan, correct? Well, you didn't stop after that. You increased the amount of debt that was the lowest by adding it to the debt that was the next smallest. Then, like a snowball rolling downhill and increasing larger, you repeated it with each loan. Now continue in this manner until all of your debts, including the major ones, have been paid in full. It resembles a line of dominoes being knocked down one by one. The debts, or dominoes, start to fall quicker as you keep going since you have more money to throw at them. It feels like crossing the finish line when you pay off your final loan. You succeeded. You don't owe anybody money anymore since you are debt free. It's a wonderful sense of accomplishment and independence. Now that you've finished the debt snowball, you're prepared to move on to the next phase of your financial journey. Step number 10, building a fully funded emergency fund. Building a fully funded emergency fund is similar to setting up a financial safety net once all of your bills have been paid off. Let's deconstruct it. Imagine this. You put forth a lot of effort to pay off all of your bills, and as a result, you are now debt-free. What a fantastic accomplishment. However, there are still some shocks in life, such as unforeseen costs or crises. Therefore, Dave Ramsey advises creating an emergency fund. This fund, which functions similarly to a special savings account, should be stocked with enough cash to cover your living costs for three to six months. Think of it as a safety net you may rely on in the event of an emergency, such as a medical expense or a job loss. You'll have this cash to depend on rather than utilizing credit cards or loans, which might result in more debt. You may feel secure and have peace of mind knowing that you have an emergency fund that is completely filled. It implies that you are ready for life's unexpected twists and turns and won't be forced back into debt if anything goes wrong. It's like having your very own financial superhero who always comes to your aid. In order to build that safety net for yourself and your family after you are debt free, this is your next major financial objective. Step number 11, investing and wealth creation. Once you've paid off your bills and set your emergency fund, investing and building wealth is like sowing the seeds for a happy financial future. Here's how to comprehend it quickly. Imagine that you had a miraculous tree in your backyard and that each dollar you invest or save is like sowing a seed. Those seeds eventually develop into a money tree that will eventually provide fruit, money, for you. Mutual funds and retirement accounts are two financial options that Dave Ramsey often recommends. Mutual funds. These are professionally managed collections of various investment products, such as stocks and bonds. Spreading your money out via mutual fund investments lowers risk. It's comparable to having many fruit trees in your garden as opposed to just one. Retirement accounts are specialized accounts for the future, similar to a savings account for when you're older and no longer employed. These accounts allow you to increase your money over time. 
and sometimes the government may provide you tax advantages for utilizing them. It's like taking care of your money tree to invest your money correctly. Your money may increase over time and enable you to do things like purchase a home, send your children to college, or enjoy a comfortable retirement. Keep in mind that your investment strategy will rely on your objectives and degree of risk tolerance. Others are ready to take additional chances, such as building an orchard with a variety of fruit trees, while other individuals choose to play it safe by cultivating apples on their own tree. To choose the best plan for you, it's vital to learn about investing or speak with a financial counselor. Being patient is essential because investments, like trees, require time to develop and pay off. We appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we invite you to leave your feedback and questions in the box provided below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the excellent stuff we provide about growing your money. Maintain your financial awareness till we meet again and make the most of the possibilities that come your way financially.